G'day everyone. Someone asked me a little while back if I could do a demonstration of Unity Mathematics. So, what's a good example for mathematics? How about gravity? So let's make our new project. Uh, let's use the universal render pipeline. There's a few options which are interesting when it comes to uh, the job system. Well, when it comes to rendering, actually. All right, so we're going to call this uh, grav gravitation. Let's do that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the recording while I just clear out this uh, demo project that you get with the um, URP universal render pipeline. Um, you know, project template. So just give me a moment. Okay, so I've just cleaned out all the yeah, all the specific stuff for the so the uh, template project. All that's left are the settings assets for the URP. Um, I've created a new scene. I've called Grav. We have some presets which are sort of let's just call them reasonable defaults and I've tweaked the skybox material that they give you uh, in the template to make it look a bit more like space so I've just made the sun size pretty big um, I've messed about with this convergence thing until it kind of I don't know looks interesting from a, sun, a space point of view let me just bring this down a bit yeah the sun's kind of blinding which a sun in space should be uh, what else do we have and the exposure yeah we want that dialed right down okay so there we are that's a decent space looking thing some stars would be useful but that's we can worry about that a bit later I might bring the sun size down to touch it's a little bit overpowering all right let's go from here all right So let's now make a place to put code. So how are we going to do this? We'll let's try making it so that we can have oh, I have an idea. We can make a controller. So let's call this the gravity controller so that'll be a mono behavior that we attach to an empty then we will have uh, let's see the idea was we'll make some in fact let's make a folder for prefabs I'm thinking we'll allow in the controller it can spawn a number of objects that are going to be managed or have gravity applied to them now what we could do is we can have make it so that there's an array in the controller and you can say how big the array should be how many prefabs do you want to have okay so let's have a look at how the software will be designed the coding so this will involve maths so it like we said before it will demonstrate unity mathematics so let's have a look at the maths involved so for any two uh, bodies in space with mass m1 and m2 we're going to calculate the force for gravitational attraction given that we have you know some distance between them and we can use this formula down here for that so force will equal some constant times the mass of one times the mass of the other divided by the distance between them squared. Now in all of this the distance is just the magnitude of the distance between them. Force is a vector so it has x, y and z parts to it and mass is just a number, it's a scalar. So when we say a scalar uh, like mass that means it's just a float value but the force will be held in a, a float 3. 
and so like I said before remember the forces will be equal in magnitude but opposite in direction and knowing that helps us take a little shortcut in the calculation and speed things up a bit okay so now that's only part of it it's great to calculate the force but then we have to calculate the acceleration and from the acceleration we can calculate the velocity from the velocity we can then update the position and so by changing the position in the transform of the game objects we will make things move so this is what we need to do in order to have a, a basic classical physics simulation or Newtonian physics so if we just look at a single object and the force applied on it then we can take that force and we can use this exp um, equation that force equals ma mass times acceleration and if we turn that around we can say that acceleration equals force divided by mass and so once we know the force on one object we can determine its acceleration just by divide, dividing that force by its mass and then once we have that then we can use delta time supplied by the unity game engine so that's the time between each frame render to calculate the change in velocity so acceleration times delta time will give us the change in velocity and we can add that to the current velocity to get uh, the new velocity so if I'm using proper you know mathematical um, kind of representation then this should be v primed or something to indicate that this is a different v from this other v and then same down here we can calculate the change in position by taking the uh, v primed and multiplying that by the change in time delta time and adding that to the current position to come up with p primed you know the change in position the new position And then, of course, once we know that new position, we just need to put that in the transform. The object moves, the frame will get rendered with the new position, and things you know look like they're moving on the screen. That's the basic mechanic of it all. In terms of organizing the code, we, we can actually write this like a small entity component system architecture. Now this just means it's just a way to organize the code and, and kind of keep things consistent and simple so in this case what's an entity an entity will basically just be a common index across all the arrays holding data about a given object so the first object in the scene will be index 0 and there may be a number of arrays like we will have an array for the, tra the transform axis array which lets us have a job that will change the transform, the position in, in the actual transforms of the game object. We'll need a, a, another array uh, to hold forces and another array to hold uh, gravity components so that we can update things. So the entity will be basically just the index. In the component we will have, in this case let's say we have two components. We have a float 3 as the the, the value type and that will be for an array of forces so this will be and represent for each object the sum of all the forces that are exerted on it by all the other other objects in the scene the gravity component will be uh, the current acceleration velocity and position of that um, you know, of that particular object in the scene so these are two components really uh, yeah two components and then over here we'll have finally a system which you know it's the let's say the gravity system and so it will manage all the arrays of the the relevant components it will manage a pipeline of jobs that do the computation and that's basically what it does so it, it's it's not a very complex class it just holds these things together and makes it easier to deal with it all so in this particular case the pipeline of jobs will compute the forces on all the objects it will then calculate the acceleration based on those forces as we explained before then it will compute the current velocity compute the position and then from that update the transform and things move so that's the general structure of the code that we'll be building <coughs> Now 
All right. So we have our, our gravity controller. That's groovy. Let's also make a structure. This is. Oh, what do you know? There's a new version of Visual Studio open uh, uh, available. Okay. Thank you for that. Let's add a class. Uh, well, not really a class. New item. Should have just done class. It's easier. I want to find a structure. You're gonna make it a pain, aren't you? Where is it? Uh, code. Really? Let's code file. Actually, let's find out. Uh, so here we want. This will be the state of a given object that's managed. So let's call this gravity component. Thinking in terms of ECS terminology, even though we're not using the um, Unity ECS. Okay. Wow, that's interesting. Okay. Uh, using, actually, will we use much of anything? Probably Unity.Mathematics. Okay, so that'll be one thing we'll need to do is um, install that. How can I first compile but not have the Unity Mathematics? Uh, that's interesting. Okay, so let's go back over here. Package Manager. Dum, dum, dum. Where are you, Burst? Here you are. No, I don't have the Burst compiler. All right. So the Burst compiler has a dependency on Unity's mathematics library. The mathematics library is what we're going to use to calculate our force vectors uh, and acceleration vectors and so forth. Gravity and gravity simulation. There's a bit of math involved. That's the point. So this will demonstrate the application of the math library. Okay, cool. So now we're going to have a public struct uh, now. Gravity component. Okay. So here we'll have a float 3 for, uh, let's say, position. We're going to do a few of these. And then there'll be velocity, and then there'll be acceleration, and that would basically do it. So the next one could be a float and just be mass. I think that will do for the moment. Ah, now the other thing is this needs to be uh, system .serializable. That lets us put this into a um, a behavior, a model behavior, which we can attach to a um, to a prefab. Hmm. Now, would we attach it to the prefab? Yes, yes, it has to be attached to the prefab. Okay. Now, let's just make uh, let's add a class, and this will be our gravity behavior. So I'm using component to mean entity component system type of component. Remember we're building our own sort of mini ECS here versus uh, you know, game objects, you know, behaviors or components. They come to, you know, Unity used to kind of mix this together. So let's think of this as a behavior. So it'll be the gravity behavior because it'll be a mono behavior. behavior. Excellent. Sure. That trash, and this trash, and yeah, that trash. And up here we'll do a using Unity Engine. Public class that. And a behavior. Okay, groovy. This will now have a serialized field private uh, gravity component. And that's actually all that needs. Oh, maybe a name would be good. Uh, that would be the gravity settings. Okay. Now, do we need anything else? 
this shouldn't be doing any logic for its behavior it's just a place to store the settings so we can edit it in the against the prefab in the editor so that's actually everything we need we might give it a tooltip just to be friendly about it um, set the config uh, let's say gravity parameters gravity parameters for this prefab okay that's that done so now we need a job which will become part of a system for for gravity we will have we're going to basically have two jobs one job will be to calculate the the acceleration now we could do this in a couple of part in a couple of parses we could have yeah that would actually be a good idea so we can have a gravity sort of update where we calculate the acceleration on all the, so if we go back to the component we basically need to calculate the new acceleration uh, we need to then so that's based on all the forces that are applying on the object then from that we can have another step to calculate the velocity and we could have another step to calculate the position now whether it whether it makes sense to do that in sort of a chain of jobs and then finally from the position we, we feed that into a transform and move it in the screen uh, we can go a couple of different ways here making it separate is nice from each job will then be a little bit simpler and possibly we can get some speed up in places because we might be able to use it in our job parallel 4 I think for the translation from acceleration into velocity and then from velocity into position 